Situated in Banff National Park in the heart of the Canadian Rockies, Lake Louise is one of the largest destination ski resorts in Western Canada. This Alberta mountain, which is actually a few miles from the iconic lake itself, is certainly remote and harder to reach than many other large ski mountains. But while it may be tough to get to, a number of traits help Lake Louise stand out against a notable crowd of competitors. In this video, we'll go through Lake Louise's overall mountain experience, and then we'll go through how the resort stacks up in our overall rankings. If you find this information helpful, be sure to like this video and hit subscribe so you don't miss any of our content. And if you want to see more exclusive tips on planning the ultimate ski trip, be sure to subscribe to our newsletter and follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, all of which are linked in the description below. Enjoy! Lake Louise is, to put it plainly, one of the most beautiful ski resorts in the world. The views of the surrounding mountains feel like those you'd see in movies. In fact, there isn't a single place at the resort that we wouldn't call absolutely gorgeous. The lake itself is visible from many frontside areas, and it's hard to find a more jaw-dropping aesthetic than this frozen body of water paired with the towering surrounding mountains. And in most circumstances, Lake Louise boasts the snow to go with these views. The resort enjoys light, dry accumulation throughout the winter, and its season is one of the longest on the continent, typically extending from November all the way to May. Lake Louise is one of the few resorts to reliably open all of its terrain zones by the Christmas holiday every year. But Lake Louise's incredibly consistent snow comes with a major catch, extraordinary cold spells. The resort is consistently well below freezing throughout the course season, and temperatures dependably drop as low as negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 34 degrees Celsius a few times a year. Lower mountain areas stay somewhat sheltered, but the bowls are highly wind exposed and frankly unbearable for any sane person during the coldest days. Visitors should watch out for frostbite, which can set in within minutes, and come prepared with clothes to layer up and cover all bare skin. Occasionally, temperatures can get so low that the resort is forced to suspend operations entirely. The effects of Lake Louise's extreme temperatures are compounded by poorly placed facilities. Most upper mountain areas are far away from lodges, meaning there's no quick and convenient way to warm up in the resort's most exposed areas. The only frontside mid-mountain lodge, the Whitehorn Bistro, is frustratingly too low to provide an effective stopping ground. This chalet is below the loading zone for the top of the world six-pack, meaning guests can't get directly back to mid-mountain and have to go all the way down to the base after stopping there. The valley between the backside and the far-removed large area thankfully has a lodge, but it gets really busy during peak times, and guests will have to make sure to stay on the right trails to avoid missing it. Measuring in at 3,000 acres, or just over 1,200 hectares, Lake Louise has the largest skiable footprint of the Banff ski resorts. The resort features an extensive variety of terrain, including below treeline slopes, near treeline glades, and exposed high alpine bowls. Lake Louise comprises three mountain zones, the front side, which offers a terrain mix for all abilities, the backside, which specializes in tougher high alpine trails, and larch, which mostly consists of distinctive tree-defined and gladed runs. Lake Louise is good, but not great, for beginners. On the plus side, with the exception of the summit chair, green runs can be found off every lift. But some of these runs, including all the greens on the backside, are flat traverses, making them doable, but not necessarily enjoyable, for less experienced guests. In fact, the lower front side greens are really the only ones that don't require some sort of catwalking or a short stint on a blue run in order to reach. Lake Louise's base area currently has a small learning area, but it is on track for expansion in the coming seasons. Lake Louise is also solid, but not exactly class leading for intermediates. The large zone is probably the best zone for blue runs, with a considerable variety of striking grooms cruisers as well as the distinctive rock garden trail, which is littered with absolutely huge rocks, but ones that are still doable for moderately experienced guests. Frontside lifts also serve a handful of blue runs, including some breathtaking high alpine runs off the summit chair. However, intermediate offerings on the backside are limited. Lake Louise guests will want to reach advanced proficiency to really appreciate the resort. More than 70% of the resort's terrain is rated black or double black, and these runs earn their designation. Most are consistently ungroomed with tough pitches, although some of the below treeline frontside blacks do receive regular grooming. All double black trails at Lake Louise are extremely steep, 
Some are comparable to Double Blacks at other resorts, while others have extreme technical features like cliffs. If you're not familiar with the mountain and you don't see tracks towards a certain trail, steer clear. Relatively new to the Lake Louise advanced and expert footprints is the resort's massive West Bowl expansion, which opened in 2020 and grew the resort by 20%. This tryingly long and steep area starts out as a wide open bowl but filters into trees towards the bottom. While the West Bowl trails are all rated as single black, some daunting rocks and cliffs are hidden about the footprint. Guests should note that this area ends with a prolonged flat traverse, so it may not be the best for snowboarders. Lake Louise has one of the best terrain park presences in all of Canada. Features vary considerably in size, with four frontside parks boasting features such as boxes, rails, jumps, in tubes, but the resort really stands out with huge double XL jumps in the parks near the base. Thanks in part to its remote location, Lake Louise doesn't see the same crowds as popular Rockies destinations in the United States. But unlike an all too high proportion of its Canadian Rockies competitors, Lake Louise actually has a pretty well designed lift setup. Access to the resort comes through two key base lifts, the Glacier Express High Speed Quad and the Grizzly Express six-passenger gondola, which distribute crowds well around the mountain. A third out-of-base lift, the Juniper Express, was added in early 2022. And while this new quad doesn't really go much of anywhere right now, a new upper Juniper lift for 2024 will add further uphill redundancy. When it comes to the overall quality of lifts, Lake Louise boasts a generally strong fleet but could use some improvements. On the plus side, the front side and large lifts are modern and mostly high speed, offering plenty of opportunities to lap terrain quickly. On the other hand, both backside chairs, Ptarmigan and Paradise, are slow, fixed grip lifts. While it's technically possible to get back to the front side without taking a backside chair lift, the only trail back is an extraordinarily flat catwalk. But there have been some improvements in recent years. The resort upgraded its summit surface lift to a fixed grip quad back in 2020. The new summit quad is in a completely different alignment than the old platter and is much shorter losing any redundancy with the top of the world lift. It's not as easy to lap certain lines anymore, but it's now much more direct to reach the top of the mountain and overall a better setup. If you know what you're doing, there's still a handful of expert shoots that are possible to lap via the summit lift. But when you're not lapping a terrain pod, you might find yourself on one of Lake Louise's traverses. And unfortunately, these catwalks will almost always leave a sour taste in your mouth. In addition to the previously mentioned West Bull exit, Traverses provide the primary means of access to all backside and large terrain for beginner and intermediate guests. These runs aren't the worst in the world as far as flatness goes, but the perennially dry and slow snow makes for horrible speed retention. During typical course season days, skiers and snowboarders should expect a mini workout to complete these runs. Lake Louise is a 40 minute drive from the Banff city center, which itself is a one and a half hour drive from the Calgary International Airport with no traffic. The Calgary Airport is well served by other Canadian cities, but there are limited direct flights from the United States, and the ones that do exist can be very pricey if you don't book well in advance. The resort runs free shuttle bus services to and from town, and there are several bus options available to town from the airport. The resort offers a mix of both free and paid parking options, but since Lake Louise and Banff proper are within Banff National Park, those driving will need to purchase a park pass in order to park at the resort. Also in part due to being in Banff National Park, Lake Louise does not have any on-site lodging. That being said, a few hotel accommodations, including the spectacular lakeside Fairmont Chateau Lake Louise, are just a short drive away from the resort. For those looking for more economical arrangements, the High Lake Louise offers both shared and single rooms in a hostel setting. A much more extensive array of lodging options exist in the town of Banff. For those looking for a bit better value from their accommodations, the town of Canmore sits an hour from Lake Louise and 20 minutes from Banff proper. Opera ski activities at Lake Louise are limited, and the hamlet of Lake Louise itself is so small that there's very little to do, besides perhaps visiting the lake itself, which is admittedly pretty spectacular, but isn't really something you can do after the sun goes down. A handful of restaurants exist in the hamlet, but they aren't sufficient for the demand and you'll have to make your reservations far in advance. Opera options become much more substantial in the town of Banff itself, with several bars, restaurants, and activities to keep guests entertained. Lake Louise's unparalleled natural beauty, top-tier consistency, and onerous expert terrain make it a great choice for a destination trip, especially one earlier in the season. 
The resort doesn't have the largest beginner or intermediate footprint, and cold spells are always a risk, but the surroundings are so striking that just about everyone will come out impressed. Lake Louise's tickets are also an excellent value for the experience, and for the 2022-23 season, they topped out at just 154 Canadian dollars, or with today's exchange rates, 113 US dollars. Even at the highest rate, this is an absolute steal for the quality of slopes Lake Louise provides. Lake Louise is also on the Mountain Collective and Icon Passes, so it can be a great option if you're planning multiple trips next year. Now let's go through how Lake Louise stacks up in our overall rankings, which are determined by the following 10 category mountain score. Lake Louise sees excellent snow preservation throughout the winter season, and while it isn't quite as plentiful as the top North American mountains, the accumulation is very high quality, earning the resort a 9 for snow. Lake Louise offers a long, reliable season and often opens most of its footprint by early January. Although serious cold spells are always a risk, and the resort gets a 9 for resiliency. Lake Louise offers a 3,000-acre skiable footprint and a 4,200-acre footprint from boundary to boundary, earning the resort an 8 for size. Lake Louise offers a very strong variety of terrain, with especially standout bowls, trees, and terrain parks, and the resort gets an 8 for terrain diversity. Lake Louise boasts a wide variety of very demanding trails, with the hardest lines featuring truly extreme, highly technical pitches if you know where to look, and the resort gets an 8 for challenge. Lake Louise generally boasts a modern lift setup, but some key lifts are still slow. 2% of the resort's terrain requires hiking to reach, and the mountain gets a 6 for lifts. Lake Louise rarely sees serious lines or trail congestion, with the only modest weights occurring at the gondola on cold days or in the mornings, and the resort gets an 8 for crowd flow. Lake Louise offers a solid base lodge, but the mid-mountain lodge setup could use some work, and the resort gets a 4 for facilities. Some of Lake Louise's mountain pods are straightforward to lap, but it takes arduous traversing to get in or out of certain terrain zones, and the resort gets a 5 for navigation. And finally, mountain aesthetic. And to put it bluntly, Lake Louise is an absolute stunner. The resort's iconic mountains and jaw-dropping lake views make for one of the most memorable aesthetics of any ski resort in the world, and the mountain earns our highest score of 10 in this category. These categories add up to an overall score of 75, placing Lake Louise 3rd in Western Canada and 11th overall. Lake Louise does have some problems, but its well-rounded terrain, especially for experts, consistent snow quality, and incredible backdrop make it one of the best destination mountains in Western Canada, if not the continent. The resort's logistical issues put it at a slight overall disadvantage in our rankings compared to nearby Banff Sunshine, but it's still way better in this respect than other well-known competitors such as Revelstoke and Kicking Horse. For a combination of low crowds, diverse terrain, and stunning views, it's hard to find a better Western Canada choice than Lake Louise. For more information on Lake Louise and over 80 destination ski resorts, check out peakrankings.com. See you for the next one.